So, take us back to sort of like the, towards the end of last year when you had the two victories and you're reassessing everything and you set your targets. Tell us about the targets you've had this year and how well you think you've done. Well, my first goal was to retain playing rights in 2021 because my wins only got me a one-year exemption. So that was my first goal, which I accomplished in Austria. My second goal I also accomplished in Austria, which was to win again on the European Tour. Next goal was to qualify for a major, which I did. Um, following after that is top 50 in the world, which I'm still kind of striving after. That's, that's where I want to get to, get into all the majors, WGCs. Um, and then finally is to qualify for all the majors in 2022. So I've still got some work left. Well, it's kind of trending though, isn't it? Because you know, you, you've had some achievements. So tell us how it's gone. So two majors so far, you've been there. But what have you learned from being there? Just how good those guys are. I mean... You always think you're really good, and then you kind of step up to another level, and you start to realize some of the areas of your game that need to get better. It's kind of similar to what happened with me coming from the Asian Tour to the European Tour. Uh, realized some areas of my game that needed to improve, and was able to do that. And now I've stepped up to another level, realized some of the areas that need to improve, and now I'm excited to work on those areas. Yeah, for me as a fan looking at it, it must I never appreciate it, but to experience playing at an Open, that must be pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, I grew up as a kid watching it. It was always one of my favorite tournaments to watch. Um, but after playing it, it's really special. Like it's like it's really something in there in, in my in my heart. And I hope I get to play every single year for the rest of my life because it is it's so it's so unique, both from the aspect of the fans. Like I think they're the best fans I've ever played in front of. Um, then you got the golf courses. You know, Lynx Golf is totally different than anything we see. You know, in a typical season, you might maybe play two or three events on Lynx Golf. And, uh, you know, the Open, I would say, is the, you know, kind of the ultimate of playing Lynx Golf. So, you know, I think that's really, really, really cool about it as well. So I hope I get to play it for the next 20 years. Good. Um, I think you are tied six here at one of the events last, last year. So what's it like coming back to a golf course that you played well on? Oh, I've been, I've, been, I've been excited for this one for a while. Um, I love this golf course. It's one of my favorite golf courses that I've played last year. Um, I just think it's every hole challenges you like uh, maybe a little bit differently, like, you know, different shots off tees. Some, some holes are longer, some holes are shorter. Some holes make you think about, okay, is it a driver? Is it a three wood? Am I laying it back behind the bunkers? Am I trying to challenge past the bunkers? Um, you know, some greens are long, some greens are narrow. Um, you know, so it, it, it challenges every aspect of your game, which I've always liked. I've always liked golf courses like that. So, and it's usually in great, great condition. And, uh, you know, any course that's hosted a Ryder Cup is usually pretty solid. Um, no matter what event you go to, you look at the quality of the field. Okay, so this isn't a Rolex event, but you look on the range, you go, well, the quality is just so, so strong on the European Tour. Always. I mean, it doesn't matter what tournament we're playing and there's always going to be great golfers. Um, you know, I guess that's... that's that's what you get when you play on the European Tour. I mean, everyone, everyone wants to play. Everyone wants to play well. This is a great tour, and I love playing out here.